All right, guys. Um, we're back, and I mean, we're we're done. I mean, this is completely serviceable. Um, I don't like picking dates, so I like to have some sort of or typing in dates. So I like to have some sort of scroll bar where you can automatically kind of do that. Um, it's a little bit difficult to set up, but but we're gonna do that. Um, one thing that you need is this developers tab, and I think that the way that you do it, if you don't see it on your on your thing here, go to file. I think it's an options. Pretty sure. Customize ribbon. So if you go into custom, so let me let me just go back into that again. File. Options. Customize ribbon. So you're trying to customize your ribbon somehow. This is probably unchecked. This developer tab here. As long as it's checked, um, you're good to go, and you should see it right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, there are these things that you can add, like you can add check boxes, you can add um, spin buttons, uh, and you can add scroll bars. I'm going to add a spin button. Um, there's a reason why I'm not picking a scroll bar, um, and I can get into that a little bit later. But what this allows you to do is put things on your on your sheet to use. So I'm putting, I'm putting this thing here, this... Uh, this theoretically is going to be used to, to move the dates, but we need to set up a process um, to have this happen. And we have a reference sheet uh, where we have our list of things that we're that we're um, using here. Um, and in this reference sheet, I think that's a pretty good place to put um, our framework for developing how the, how that button works. And we're going to need a couple things. Um, we're going to need a date, and we're going to need an ID, which is essentially a number uh, from zero to to whatever, because um, that's what the scroll bar, that's what this thing looks at um, to change. And then we're also going to need uh, just a couple of key items based off of that information. We're just going to need an item that identifies the scroll bar selection. Uh, where I'm just going to say scroll bar selection and the date associated with that scroll bar selection. So what we want here, essentially what, what we want here is, we so we have this database, right, with a bunch of people and a bunch of dates. And, you know, the, the dates are listed a million times. Um, if, how do I put this? Uh, we need a unique list of these dates, so we can't have any overlapping dates. And we can do that manually. Um, we can copy all, like, here's a way to do it manually. We can copy all the dates, go into this reference sheet, and I'm going to right-click and paste the values. Don't do this with me, please. Um, it's, it's a waste of your time. And we can go into the, but it's also good to know how to do this. So we have all these dates, and we can go to data this thing here, remove duplicates, and I'm going to click OK. And now I have all the dates in my data set. The issue with this is that you'd have to do this every time you update your data set. We can be smarter than that, and we can put in a formula here that will do that for us. And what we're going to do is we are going to say equals unique Table daily date. Okay. And now let's and what that does is it creates a unique list of, of whatever that is, dates. So I'm gonna go to short date. And now just for whatever reason, I, I'm just gonna see what happens here. Notice how they're in order from lowest to lowest to highest or oldest to most recent. If I am, if I switch this table around, let's say I go newest to oldest, and I go back to my reference, then this order switches too. So let me try this. You're going to sort unique table daily date. Click enter. Now what that does is it automatically sorts it from, oops, it automatically sorts it from least uh, oldest to, to most recent. So that, so that it stays consistent. Now, each of these dates is going to have to have a value associated with it. 
or an ID, and that's what the scroll bar is, is, is going to look at. So we need to kind of be smart about how we do this because we want these values to update automatically. Um, so the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm like the value one. I'm going to say equals if this if that equals table daily. If that is eight. Sorry, I, I kind of went out of order. If that equals the minimum, that's what the min is. So if this number equals the minimum date in, in our data set, then we want the number to be one. And what we're going to find out is that if we kind of eventually, if we were to put this formula all the way down and, and there are blanks, we'll still get numbers if we don't do this next step where if this number or that date is or that cell is blank then make it blank and then the next part of this thing is if it's not blank and it's not the minimum date then we want the value before it plus one um, so the way that, that that looks is so if First of all, if this is the minimum date, this date in this column is the minimum date, then it's going to be one. If it's blank, it's going to be blank. But if it's neither of those, it's going to be the cell above it plus one. I think that'll work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down. Keep on dragging it down. So now these are blank because these cells are blank which is great because we don't want a bunch of values um, or errors uh, in this thing because it'll it could especially if you want to use a scroll bar I picked a spin button um, scroll bars have have issues because you can't set the maximum value uh, this isn't going to make sense anyone I don't know what I'm talking about it but in essence this formula works it's great each date has an ID and now we need to formulate it in a way that works with the with the button uh, that we're creating so what we're going to have to do right now, we're just going to put in the number one here. Okay, this is what the what the scroll bar, or in our case, the spin button, is going to look at, and then we need a date that's associated with this number. So we're going to do. We learned about index match a little while ago. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to index the date or whatever's in this column, and we're going to match. So we want whatever is in that column if lookup value which is this cell is equal to the lookup array or the value in the lookup array which is this column here zero and I'm just going to close it off and I'm going to do if error blank thing again I, I, I just have a habit of doing it and I haven't done it everywhere but I do it most places so and let's make this a short date we said we want whatever's in this column if this number or when this number matches up with what's in that column. Um, so I'm gonna let's say I make this number five, this date should align with whatever is with number five, which is right there. And I'm gonna put it back to one for now. And now we're gonna manipulate our button to look at this stuff. So with our button, we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna go to format control. It has a minimum value, a maximum value. You don't have to worry about a lot of this stuff. Incremental change is one. You do have to worry about that. So uh, what that incremental change means is right now it's one. So that means for every click of the button, it's going to go plus one or minus one in this ID. And that's fine. So it's not going to go plus one or minus one every day. It's going to go plus one, minus one every ID, which is associated with whatever date is in our data set. So that's what I want. Um, go back to format control and now it's asking for a cell link and I want this this thing this uh, scroll bar to be linked to this number the maximum value can can be whatever um, in this case but this is where the problem so when I was talking about scroll bars if you had a scroll bar you can't, unless you use custom coding in the Excel platform, you can't 
um, make this number link to a cell, you have to select it. So if, if this number is really high and you don't have that many dates, like at the beginning of a season, then there's a lot of room on the end of the scroll bar and it's really hard to use it. And in the other way, if you make this number really small to accommodate for the number of days that have passed in your season, let's say, you're going to have to keep on updating the maximum value. Um, that's why I'm using the spin button. But in any case, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make the current value 1. Click OK. So now if I click this value, if I click up, the scroll bar selection changed to 2. And if I go, where is it? If I, and if I click it up again, now it's number 3, and the date is associated with it. So the last thing that we have to do to get to this to work is instead of us typing in a date here, we need to have this date equal to whatever this date is. And the way that we do that and is I'm going to go equals, uh, you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. If, oops, if this, uh, whoops, sorry, so equals if this date, whatever this is, I'm just locking the cell, equals blank, then I'm going to have it say, no, no, no date or no data. It doesn't really matter. But if this is not blank, I want it to be whatever this date is. Okay. I'm going to do the if error thing too. If error, if there's an error with that formula, make it blank. Okay. So now I have this date. Um, remember, we're not touching this date anymore. Okay. This date is, is set it and, and, and forget it. Um, because now, if I click up on the scroll bar, it'll go to my next date. I click up again, my next one, next one. And and I already noticed I need to make an adjustment with the conditional formatting here. But you can go up and down dates pretty easily. And this still works with the past X number of days, right? So I want to look at the aggregates of the past 14 days relative to 123. Now it's the past 14 days, 128, 130, 24, et cetera. So what's going to happen is that when we, because the maximum value is so high on this thing, we can keep on going. We can keep on going. It's at current value six now. It's at six here, but we can just keep on going beyond these numbers here and you'll see what happens. So I'm just going to keep on going up, 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 up. And eventually, like we can just keep on going forever. Um, but there's no data, so it doesn't really make sense. So, or that's why I have that if formula in there, because if I didn't, then it would just give me something weird here and it would and it would just be awkward. So now at least I know what's going on um, when I reach a point that I don't have any more dates left. And now that I notice this, um, with the conditional formatting, I, I might as well, I might as well just do this now. Um, is one rule that I like to apply a lot, and I didn't do it on this one, I guess, um, is I'm going to go to conditional formatting. There's a little bit of a review. Manage rules. I usually do something that relates to the cell being uh, blank and having that have no color to it. So right now I don't have that. And the way that I do that is Actually, I'm, I'm just going to apply this to all of the, all of these at once. Oops, excuse me. Um, might as well. It, it doesn't make a huge difference. So I'm going to do a new rule. Format only cells that contain blanks. And there's no format set. So I'm just going to click OK. But what I need to do is I need to make that rule take priority over the other rules. So I'm going to go to Manage Rules. And I'm going to go to stop if true. So if there is no data uh, or if these cells are blank, then just don't worry about anything else and just make them whatever this format is here. That's what I'm telling it to do. I'm going to click apply. OK. Now, now there's nothing there. Um, so now when I 
when I go through and there are no grades, for example, on given days, it's just going to be no format. Or you could have it say whatever you want. And I might as well do this just for for an example. I don't know what you're going to want to put in there. But, you know, you could have it be instead of no format set, you know, you could have it be, I don't know, um, like black or something. Right. So you, you could kind of if I click click apply, I don't know where it went. Um, Again, well, I, I did that to, to multiple cells, but still. So I'm just going to undo. And there we have it. So this is our dynamic dashboard. And I haven't used these these um, these table filters, but remember, um, you can just focus in on a couple players here. And the table will filter down to these guys, right? We've done a lot of different things. You can compare them to the class, uh, the averages or their position average, whatever that position or group is. Um, we have graphs, except I I don't know. Oh, so maybe, oh, so I just figured out something. So let's undo this really quickly. Now that we're finished with this, maybe we do want this to, so with this graph here, we have it moving and sizing with cells. This one we don't, but maybe now we do. Um, so that when we manipulate the table, we can, this graph will come along for the ride. So now that I did that, I changed that setting. If I click these people, the graph will come up. And, and yeah, um, little things, I guess, is I want these to be in the middle, not the middle of the, the row, but I want them to not be on the, on the bottom. Probably the same with this stuff. And I don't want it to be on the bottom. We also segregate by groups. Again, same thing. Um, and yeah, this is a uh, this is what we got. Change the dates, like we said. Change the aggregations over the past 28 days. And that's uh, that's how she goes. One in in the next video, I'm going to go over one other thing um, that relates to um, manipulating these in case this isn't the way that you want it set up. I have a different way um, that I like to do it too, um, which makes it a little bit more dynamic than this way. And I'm going to go over that in the next video.